able to overcome. You're listening to the Overcoming Daily Podcast with Anna Johnson of sacredlifecoaching.com. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Anna began her journey of becoming the Overcomer Coach as a licensed clinical social worker investing over 10 years to helping others in the mental health field. In her experience as a therapist, she became aware that believers are struggling from the same issues as non-believers. Same issues as non-believers. As Anna sought wisdom on this matter, the Heavenly Father inspired her to give up her clinical career in order to serve the body as a coach, to help them in overcoming life and spiritual challenges through kingdom principles. Kingdom principles. And so, the Overcomer Coach was born. Enjoy today's episode, Overcomer. Here's your host of the Overcoming Daily Podcast, Anna Johnson. Shalom. Welcome to season three of Overcoming Daily with Anna Johnson. My name is Anna Johnson and I am your Overcomer coach. This season is titled Testimonies of the Overcomer. And today's guest is Jennifer Lance. Welcome, Jennifer. Welcome. Welcome. I've known Jennifer. Goodness, Jennifer. It's been like, has it really been that many years? It's been... It's been, been about three three years, right? Yeah. Wow. I've known Jennifer for three years. Uh, and I'm just gonna let Jennifer introduce herself. She is a she is an overcomer. That's why you're on the show, right, Jennifer? Uh right. Jennifer, <laughs> why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi. Uh okay. Well, my name is Jennifer. I'm 39 years old. I live in the Midwest, born and raised. Um, I'm married. I have two beautiful children, a daughter who's 17, a son who's nine. Um, and you know, we've just kind of, we've been through ups and downs in life. Um, I've been a single mom with my oldest daughter. Um, my husband and I got married, uh, in our early thirties and we really have just been kind of growing in our faith together. And, uh, you know, Anna has just been a huge help to us so far. So all right. Her. <laughs> all right, Jennifer. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. So uh, why don't we do this? Why don't we just jump in? We're going to start off with some prayer and then we're just going to jump into the interview. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we give you the glory, Father. Father, we just thank you for an opportunity just to worship you and to, to glorify you, Father. We pray for every listener, Father, that they would be encouraged today. And Father, we just welcome your presence. We welcome your Holy Spirit as we move forward in the interview, Father. We just pray that you would be glorified in this time. In your beloved son's name, we pray and we thank thee and give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So Jennifer, you and I have been working together for like over three years, right? Yes. And we first came together, if I remember, like when we first connected, if I remember correctly, there was like anxiety was some one of the things that we were talking about, right? Absolutely. And we just been doing life together, right? Like as, yeah. as, yeah, like, uh, and I would say that anxiety, like really has been, you, you guys have really overcome that because you've, you've taken these same, these same principles that you and I have been, that we've talked about and you fed them to your family, right? Yes, absolutely. And probably friends. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So, uh, today let's just for the sake of the listeners, what is going to be our, like, what was one of the challenges that you want, that you and I worked together on that you want to talk about today? Um, so definitely anxiety and setting boundaries. Um, there's a couple of things and also just, um, knowing when to take something off of your plate. All right. All right. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit about that one, like, boundaries why what made you just like come into the realization like wow boundaries are important for me like for you as a person you want to share um, like how you got to that place sure absolutely um i always have felt like a caregiver i've always um had a deep sense of empathy for people and just a strong desire to help others and um you know, that can be a good thing, but in many ways it was kind of running my life and kind of ruining my life um, because giving and helping was good until it wasn't. 
And right. I was giving more than I had and helping situations and people that I wasn't called to. Right. So spreading yourself too thin. And, um, and you know, for those of you that are listening, Jennifer is a very kind hearted and generous person. And so, and you know, and a lot of us, we get into this trap. I know I've been into this trap is like where we become not a priority, you know, like, and, and, when, and that's one of the things that I work with a lot of women and is, you know, that we're pouring ourselves out and, you know, and usually the people that are around us, we know they, they're not just, they don't really, we're poor. We are the ones pouring out, but we're not around a lot of people that pour in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then not only, especially as being as mothers and wives, not only, um, that, but the, you know, you have, you know, you look like super mom to your family. So they're like, if you don't ask for space, if you don't ask for like your own breathing space, they're not going to give it to you. Right. Yes. <laughs> so, so Jennifer, what happened? Like, so what happened to like you, I, I'm, I'm going to let you tell it, but you, you know, like your back got against the wall that you had to be like, kind of put up against the wall to be like, to see it. Right. So what happened? Um, (laughs) I ended up in the hospital. Um, Yeah. We wouldn't recommend, recommend that strategy for anybody. Right. But absolutely not. Um, so we were fostering Mm -hmm. and I was homeschooling. And, you know, just trying to be active in my family and friends' lives. And I wasn't taking care of myself and setting boundaries. Um, And I really just ended up in a health crisis. I had kind of neglected myself and my basic needs for so long that my body couldn't keep going. So right. It was it was one of those moments where I was like, someone needs to help me because I don't know what I'm doing. I needed some right. And it didn't them. happen overnight, did it, Jennifer? It didn't no. happen overnight. No, absolutely not. It, it didn't happen awesome. overnight. Yeah. Um, and you know, and this has been kind of like your this has been your like it was your life. It's not your life anymore because you've you've developed some new things, right? But this was just kind of like This was just the kind of the way that you just your regular day life for you. Yeah. Every day was wake up, make sure the kids and husband and everyone is okay. And that was it. I mean, that was what my focus was. I didn't really think about myself in lots of basic ways as far as respecting my body, respecting my time, respecting my needs. I you know, it's easy when you love people so much that you think about them all the time and you want them all the time. But that's actually what ended up making me unavailable to them for a Mm. period of time. Well, and just hallelujah that you, that I was in your, uh, that I'm in your life. Right. (laughs) Definitely. Uh, Because it was like, I remember you, we were, you know, listen, guys, she was coaching from her hospital bed. You know, you were in the hospital. I was in the hospital. And um, we got to talking and, you know, like, don't get us wrong. Like sometimes people just end up in the hospital because, you know, things happen. Right. But part of it was, is like you were so busy pouring out that you didn't you you had failed to do some pauses. It's like some important pauses. Right. Like, wait a minute. Um, I probably need to eat or I need to eat right, or I need to take my medicine, or I need to get some sleep, or I need to decrease my stress and say no. And I still remember you were telling me like, Anna, I'm just, I try to go to the bathroom and people are at the door. Remember that? I do. I remember saying, you know, like when you're going to the bathroom and your kids are asking you a question outside the door and you were like, wait, that's not, that's not right. (laughs) They should respect you during Mm -hmm. your time that you're in the restroom. And you kind of pulled in my husband too. You know, I have a wonderful husband who wants to help me, but I wasn't telling him what I needed from him. Oh yeah. I wasn't saying like, Hey, they're not respecting my time. My space. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my most basic personal time. And I need you to step in and kind of help rein this in. Right. Like have my back, have my back, have my back. 
And, um, yeah. And, and, you know, and, and you're see part of the thing with boundaries is just education. Like we have to educate people, especially kids. You have to educate and then reinforce. And, you know, you know, and I, and, and I was telling you like, like, no, the same thing happens to me, <laughs> but I have consistently said, Hey, listen, I'm in the bathroom. This is my personal time. Yes. Leave me alone. And then I was telling you that my husband, like he will get onto the kids if he sees them coming. They still try, you know, yeah. they still try. <laughs> they do. Um, they do. they're, you know, they're children. That's what they do. Uh, and even just, it's, it's like almost like a human thing that humans are always testing boundaries. It's just what we do. Yeah. Right. It is it's what we do. And, um, and so, you know, for those that are listening that might be wrestling with boundary issues, this boundary thing for you didn't happen overnight. No. You know, like, you know, we won't go into like all of your, we won't go into all of your story or whatever, but you have a long history of not being heard, right? Or not feeling heard at least. We'll say that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And Yeah. And so for those of you that are listening to the podcast that may be in childhood or at any point in time in your life where you've not felt heard and you stop talking, stop talking. We're just going to encourage them, aren't we, Jennifer? Start yes. talking again. Start talking. Start advocating for yourself. I, I didn't realize the cycle that I had gotten in where I didn't, I had been told that my needs were not important long enough that I started to believe it. Right. And I, and I struggled subsequently with guilt over advocating for myself for anything. So it right. was a cycle that started way, way back. And I was believing lies that were, were, you know, told to me. Right. And a lot of times women feel guilty. Yes. We will feel, we'll feel like we're being selfish if we actually take time to address our, just our basic needs. Yeah. 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 And so I was pretty much like, Jennifer, you're no good to your family dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm like, you got to preserve your life because these people need you, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and you've actually, you've been doing a really, you you know, and then let's talk about that. So then you come home from the hospital with this revelation, right? And you, and yeah. hallelujah, you have a husband that was supportive, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, but then you actually had to start walking. You had to walk the talk, right? I did. I did. And it was, it was difficult because of the guilt. Um, I think I forgot to mention at that time, we also had my mother-in-law living with us because she'd had a stroke. So there was homeschooling, fostering, mother-in-law living in there. And I think one of the first things and probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had with my husband was... I love you so much and I love your mom so much, but I can't physically keep doing this. Right. And, and I think she was at a point where she, you know, wanted her freedom. She'd been independent the whole time. So it kind of worked together. But, you know, me saying to him that I couldn't do that at that point, even though I wanted to, was so difficult. And I mean, I really just felt horrible guilt. But then at the end of the day, when it was off my plate, it was so much easier to start incorporating the things that I needed to do for myself so I could get better. Right. You had a lot of compounded stress. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Yeah. Um, and then one of the greatest stressors though, was it was mental and emotional. Yeah. Meaning that expectation you had placed upon yourself. Self. Yes. It was like you had this high expectation out of yourself. And I really do believe that's what contributed to like some of that, the issues with your health. Yeah. Like you had this expectation, like I've got to be there for my mother-in-law. I've got to be there for my foster kid. I got to be there for my children. I got to be there for my husband. I got to keep the house flowing. Oh, by the way, I've got health. I have health, certain health conditions that require... <laughs> less stress and, you know, time and attention. And like, that was like at the bottom of your plate. It was. It and was. you never got to it until like it slammed you in the hospital, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I think about if I hadn't have been able to reach out to you where I might be today, 
Um, and it's kind of a morbid thought to think about it, but if mm -hmm. I didn't have someone who has the background that you do and the information, mm -hmm. I would still be in that cycle or worse. There, yeah, and you I mean, broke out, you know what, you broke out of that cycle, um, you broke out of it really easily. But, um, you know, and, and, that, and that's not generally the rule for people, but you and I have been together a long time, you know, and um, relationship does help with that, you know, but you broke out of that cycle fairly easily. Um, but we're just, I'm saying this just for the listener to know that it, it usually is not that easy. It's not that easy. And you know, like when you came back, when you got out of the hospital just this past year, Happy 2022, Jennifer. Hey, happy 2022. <laughs> we're starting the new year out together, girl. First day of yes. January and we're together. Um, but when you came home, like this past year, like it's been, I'm just seeing it right now. Like you have been dropping stress. Yeah. For, but, but in order to drop stress, first you have to like, you, you take on some stress of dropping it, right? You do. It's, it's the initial hurdle because you're... It's funny, but when you're almost addicted to helping people, um, there's a fear of what's on the other side. What does my life look like if I'm not constantly doing stuff for other people? Yeah. And who am I then? Because very much. Yes. My who am I? Right. Yeah. Who am I if I'm not helping people? Yeah. Because I'm you a know, helper. Who am I if I say no? Who am yeah. I if I decrease in some areas? Right. Yeah. And it, it, it just took understanding that. I'm enough as a wife and a mom, I am enough and I can still be carrying out my purpose and I can still have worth, but there's a lot of fear that was tied up in walking away from some of the stuff that I told myself I am. I'm a foster parent, I am a caregiver, I am all these things. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was difficult, but it I, you know, I was able to do it with your help, with you teaching me how to reach out for help. That's a big thing is just learning how to reach out for yeah. help. And just that that validation and that support that you, that says it's okay. Yeah. Like it's okay. And, and being able to like, because sometimes, you know, depending on our upbringing or, you know, like what we're instilled, you know, my mom was a, my mom was, she's quite the overcomer now, a workaholic. So like that was a part of her identity. You were just doing, 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 doing. Yeah. And if you weren't doing, then that was negative. Yes. Um, and it's okay to, it's okay to say, I can't, we have to, we have to honor our limitations, right? Absolutely. We have to honor them or they'll break us. But then on the other side is strength mm -hmm. because overcoming those things shows you how strong you really are. And, and, you know, I feel like it's a lie from the enemy that you, if you aren't doing, if you aren't stuck in this little box that he puts you in, you're nothing. And that's the lie. The lie is not, or the, the hard part is not believing the lie. That's, that's the hard part. You said it, sister. <laughs> you said it. That's that's the battle right there. So let's just add, let's just say that for the listener. Like, what is the lie that's been operating that's actually causing lies cause damage? Yeah, they cause damage. They cause oppression. Yeah. And um, one of the lies for you is is like, well, I have to do all of these things and I can't say no yeah. because that would be that would be um, unloving of me. That would be unkind. That would be selfish. Oh, and I'm like Jennifer, if you're dead. <laughs> like this is not I'm like there are things to die for sister and this is not one of those things to die for. That's so right? true. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know and you do I mean honestly Jennifer you're one of the you're one of the few people I know that genuinely just is a lover. Like you are just a lover. And so we have to and, and so I'm speaking to other people that are wired like you in particular is like protect your gift. Yeah. Protect your gift. Yes. And a gift is not a gift if it's used out of balance. That's right. And, and it, I, I had to learn how to do it within balance, within respecting the fact that I need to sustain myself to carry out this gift, you know, mm -hmm. and 
I think our society encourages us so much to just use your gift as quick and as much as you can, and then you burn out. And I don't believe that that's what the Bible says about how we're supposed to operate. You know, I believe that God wants us to have that balance in our life. Um, you know, it, it, yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, yesterday I was feeling guilty um, because I was, I was just tired. I've been helping with my grandkids and uh, my daughter works midnight. So here I am, I've got a two-year-old in bed with me and, um, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm an old mama at this point. I'm like sleeping with a two year old wears me out. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> I was feeling guilty yesterday because like, come, it was like around three o'clock. I'm like, I told my husband, I'm like, we were needed to go to the grocery store. I'm like, I just can't do it. I'm cause grocery shopping is exhausting. Yes. I'm like, I can't do it. And I took a nap. And later yesterday evening, as I was worshiping, I heard, even, even Christ took a nap. Yes. Even he <laughs> took a nap. Anna, you're human. It's okay to take a nap, you know? Yes. Uh, but there's a lie there that says, you know, don't you dare take a break, you know? Yeah. There, and, and, and see, and it, part of it's true. Like we got work to do, right? Like yeah. life is short. We're here for a season. We need to be sowing and reaping and, you know, and doing things for the sake of the kingdom. And everything is kingdom work, people. If you're taking care of your husband, if you're taking care of your children, if you are taking care of yourself, it's all kingdom work. Yeah. Right? It is. Um, but um, somehow or another, I had the enemy was really shaming me for taking that nap. You know, like you wasted an hour. You know, you should have been being more productive. And, uh, and then last night in, in the father's grace, he was like, Annie, even my son took a nap. Cause you know, we read in scripture where he's, they're looking for him and he's like, he's sleeping. They're like, you know, let him rest. Rest is <laughs> what is one of his biggest gifts to us. Hallelujah. Rest and peace and healing. I mean, his gifts are so good, but you have to believe that you're worthy of them. And he, mm -hmm. he wants you to have these gifts, just like I want my children to be well rested, well fed, healthy. You know, I feel sometimes I forget that he looks at me how I look at my kids. And so I feel like, well, I can't do this because I haven't earned it. I haven't, you know, anything. And it's like, my children don't have to earn all of the gifts right. that I give them. It's because I love them and it's because mm -hmm. it's what's good for them. And I know that. And so it's, it's so hard sometimes to feel worthy of the good things that he's like, just take it, just take it. It's Hallelujah. for you. I love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, it's true. It's so true. It's so true. So this year has been like, you really have, I'm so proud of you. And I really am just the things that you have, you went, we, you know, we've been together over three years and you've just been, you have been releasing things. You're getting lighter. You know, when we started out, we were talking about anxiety, man, you remember how big that, that anxiety was like over your head. Yes. And now it's on the ground. Yeah. And occasionally it tries to, now the thing about anxiety is it tries to jump back on you, right, Jennifer? <laughs> It does. But, it does. But you have to just, you just got to dust it off, right? Start dusting yeah. it off. Got to use um, your tools. But, you've got to, you've got to reach out to the people that God has put in your life and, and yeah. use the tools that, that, you know, you've given me that the Bible gives us to, to really get it under control. I mean, our battle never really ends completely, but we get good at overcoming battles. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and you know what? I'm so glad we're having this conversation because it causes me to reflect uh, like where we started and where we are now. Yeah. And it's just so amazing. Like, uh, and you know, and, and I'm even hearing and as, as I'm talking is, is that um, the, th the thing about the coaching is, is that it was a dedicated time a time that Jennifer set aside to work on taking your life to healthier places. Yes. And we all need that. We all need that. And so, you know, and it's always great when we can take someone on the journey with us or, you know, if you're going to go, if you're going to go climbing, why would you go on a hike by yourself? If you, especially this is like a hike that you've already slid down the mountain a thousand times. Yeah. 
why not hire someone to, to go hiking with you, right? Absolutely. Well, someone who's experienced in it. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, I've told you before, and I mean it, my most important act of self-care is the time that I spend talking with you and also the time that I spend reading God's word. Holly, Those are yeah. my most mm -hmm. important acts of self-care because... There is nothing else that I do. Getting your nails done is good for your nails. Getting, you know, um, lunch out with a girlfriend is is good in a way. But you're, you know, coaching with you is not just, you know, what I would get at a counselor, not just what I would get, you know, reading the word. It's <clears throat> like mind, body, spirit. I mean, we've touched on my diet. We've touched on being more physically active. We've touched on my prayer life. We touch on all of it. Childhood of it. is, we talked it's, about childhood. Childhood, we dug into there. We, we, we went, we, goodness, <laughs> we've even dragged family members into our coaching sessions, haven't we? We <laughs> have, we have. I'm forever grateful to the friends that referred me to you mm -hmm, and I've referred mm -hmm, you. There's mm -hmm. not one person in our house who hasn't talked to you at one point or another. And oh, I just yeah. feel like it's the most, valuable investment in our right. lives because I, I said before, I don't know where we would be if we hadn't had you with us on this journey mm -hmm. the past few years. It's just so completely vital wow. to, well, yeah, I'm just, journey. I'm just thinking about like where your life was when we met and mm -hmm. where it's at now. And, um, I say this all for the glory. It's all for the glory of God is, is that it really boils down to Jennifer. You made a decision. You made a decision, you know, like you had tried some, you, you were, you were familiar with counseling. Oh yeah. You, you had done that. Yeah. Um, Since 19 years old, I had tried yeah. it. I got and some I, tools, Just by, by the great, by word of mouth, a friend, you and I connected, right? Yeah. And, and we didn't take teacher. a clinical approach to it. We took a just a straight up scriptural approach yeah. and, you know, just leaned into the word of God. We leaned into the Holy Spirit and the spirit has just been working in your life. And not only like, how do you think coaching has changed your fam, like just your marriage and your family? And because it so wasn't, it's not just you, right? Like you no. weren't the only one affected. So, um, I can say I'll start with my husband. We communicate better. Um, I am not afraid to ask for help from him now. And I don't feel guilty asking him, like if the kids, if our youngest comes and says, I want something to eat and I'm in the middle of something, I say, dad can help you with that. And dad helps him with it. That's so, right. I, mean, I think, you know, it's, it's helped our marriage as far as communication and just leaning on each other. Um, with my oldest child, you know, I've always had a very strong heart tie with her because I was a single mom with her. Yeah. So we got super, super, super close. And I never thought I would get to a point where I am now where she's driving and she's going out and she's living her life, which is a miracle for her as well, because she struggled with anxiety. Now she's out there socializing, having fun, working, living mm -hmm. a full life. And I'm able to let go of her more. And yeah, so, she's developing her autonomy. Yes. Yeah. And I'm learning how to just kind of let that string out little by little. Um, you know, and it's which just, is it's kind like, of it's miraculous, right? If you really think about it. It's huge. Because you guys, when we huge. met, you two were like this, yes. like I mean, Might tighter than what person. I could probably put these fingers. Yes. And I've, and I've, and I've watched you two, like now you guys are kind of like side by side. And sometimes you'll kind of hug for a minute yeah. side by side, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah which is healthy, which is you healthy. Know, I was afraid of that separation, but you were able to show us how it's better for both of us and it's healthier. And we have a healthier form of love yeah. rather than a, we got to hold on to each other so that we can get through this. It's like healthy. It's like, hey, I've got you. You've got me. We're good. 
we're mm-hmm. okay. Like, and it's okay. just as valuable. So sometimes with, and I'm saying this for the listener, like sometimes when you have a, a very like enmeshed, it might be the word, like a, a relationship, there's a bonding that takes place just out of whatever reason where you are like super tied together. It's almost like your lifelines are tied together. Yeah. And um, that can really be, it can be one of the enemy takes you down. He's going to take both of you down. If your lifeline is tied together, uh, where if you're able to be side by side, you can better fight for one another. Absolutely. Um, Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. So you have been, you have really, you've been overcoming, you've been overcoming, you have been overcoming, you have been overcoming. I'm excited about this year. You're doing new things in 2022. Yeah. New things. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I was able to make healthier decisions about what to do moving forward. Now that I have a healthy understanding of balance in my life, what I can and can't put on my plate. And I feel like I'm I feel like I'm actually more available to the people that I care about in a way because and it sounds strange because my biggest fear was not being available to them but as i like slowly take self care and boundaries um you know to heart and and apply the principles that you've taught me i'm actually feeling more available because i'm available from a healthy place and not a place where i'm stressed out and you're more intent, more mindful you're more present yeah Absolutely. And you're in less fatigue, really, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Fatigue, absolutely. like fatigue is something else for a woman. You know, yes. my goodness, it's real. Yeah. It is real. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. So, if, sorry, I just hit my mic. So, tell me two tools that you would encourage people, just two tools that, you know, that, that you would encourage anyone listening that they would utilize uh, that you've kind of learned through coaching. Definitely um, have your prayer life in check. That's right, girl. Have your prayer mm-hmm. life in check. Be prayed up. Be, you know, the Bible says we should be continually praying. And I believe that. I believe that, you know, the more you're in communication with God, the the easier your life tends to go. It's not always going to be perfect, but when you're communicating with him, you're, mm-hmm. you're building that relationship and it gives you a strength and a soundness that you can't get from anything else. So prayer Nothing because like it. it's communication and it's, it's vital. So a prayer. And then, um, you know, I would say just specifically for women, don't be afraid to challenge that feeling of guilt. Don't be afraid to challenge it and really say, you know what? I don't think this is I don't think this is true. I don't think this is right. You know, I'm not a perfect person, but I know in my heart of hearts that I am doing the best that I can right now. And guilt is a lie. It's a lie. And and it's it's just kept too many women captive for too long. So I would say, you know, get a hold of Anna. (laughs) I think Anna is probably one of the best people you know, in the arena of anxiety and definitely overcoming, um, you know, it's so important to have the right people in your life. So don't be afraid to take on those hard issues with someone who knows how to take you through it. So definitely challenge guilt, challenge the lies that Satan has been telling you and know your resources. Um, and I, I just have to say, Anna's probably the best resource that I could oh, ever recommend you. to anyone mm-hmm. because she has, um, she's a strong woman of faith. She, she hears from God. She is sincere. She loves, she has a, a sense of balance in her, in her thinking. She's very balanced in her thinking and just very much someone that you can trust with your life. You can trust Mm -hmm. her with your most intimate problems, (laughs) intimate details of your life. And she will be faithful to pray for you and faithful to point you in the right direction. And it has made all the difference in the world for me and my family and many people that I know. 
You are just too kind. Thank you. <laughs> but I do love my people. I love my people because God loves my people. And if he loves them, that means I'm commanded to love them, right? Absolutely. It um, comes across very much how yeah. much you care about people. And it's genuine. And that's the biggest thing. You can go and talk to a therapist and he can tell you what the tools are. But until you have someone who has your back in so many different ways, it, mm -hmm. it, it's just not the same. It's just no not the same me. thing. Yeah. All right. So one closing. So just give us one closing sentence of encouragement to the listener. The listener that might be struggling with boundaries, anxiety, um, self-care. What's that? What is that one encouraging thing you want to list? You want to you want to leave them with? Uh, you can overcome this. Hallelujah. You overcome this. Yeah, you can overcome this. And of course, you know what I'm going to say. Don't delay. Do yes. it today, right? Do it today, <laughs> the sooner the better. Every day is an overcomer day, right, Jennifer? Absolutely. So we just want to encourage all of you listeners to, to like, if you're wrestling with boundaries, if you're wrestling with self-care, if you're wrestling with shame and the guilt monster, um, if you're, if you find yourself in illness or irritability or irritability, depression, you might have just stretched yourself too thin, too thin. Now, you know, uh, God tells us that he, you know, when we take on his burden, his yoke is light. The things that he has called us to do. If we find ourselves being hard pressed, sometimes we've taken on things. And Jennifer, you realize this, right? We've yes. taken on things. He didn't call us to take on, you know, it's like, no, Jennifer, go take a shower and tell those kids, leave you alone. You know, <laughs> but Jennifer's like, I got to be available 24 seven. I don't get like even a minute for myself. And you didn't have any bitterness or resentment about it. That's why I was like, you're just so loving, you know, like, but you were, you were dying. Literally. Literally. Like your health was deteriorating, right? Yeah. It was bad. It was so bad. Yeah. I, and so we had to look at it from another angle and all glory be to the father. Yes. Here we are. Hallelujah. Jennifer is overcoming, hallelujah. overcoming daily. <laughs> And we're grateful. Like, I'm, hallelujah, I'm grateful. And I know, you know, Jennifer, I always say, like, I know you think I'm twisted because I get excited about challenges, don't I, Jennifer? You do. <laughs> um, but it was like, you know, I looked at it like this hospital situation, this is it. Like, this is an this opportunity. Is like, I was excited about it because, yeah. you know, when we are knocked down, a lot of times we think, oh, man, this is terrible. But no, like, it's an opportunity to, like, get back up and walk differently. So, hallelujah, you, you, so you haven't been the same since you left that hospital. You've oh, not no. been the same. No, absolutely not. No, that was a defining moment. Yeah. I've had a lot of defining moments with you. That was probably my biggest, though, just realizing, oh, yeah. you know, that exactly. I could overcome the lies that I've been believing and just really make strides in my life and changes that have just had mm -hmm. a, a ripple effect and have touched others. Right, lives. because you are important, too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So those of you who are listening, listen, you're important too. Um, you caring about other people doesn't make you important because you were already important, right? Yes. And so a lot of times as, as women, our identity is, can you know, we feel important when we are treating other people like they're important and that we're, but we're putting them ahead of ourselves. And then if we're dead, who's going to take care of our people? See, that's the, that's one of the things that the enemy doesn't tell us, right? He kind of, he hides that thing. You're like, oh, you need to be doing this and you need to be doing that and you need to be doing this. And, um, and the enemy often will try to hijack the good things about it, about us. Yeah. You know, like if you care about people, he'll try to get you to care about them to the point that you actually hurt yourself yeah. or even hurt them. That's where en enabling people comes, comes from, you yes. know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, all right, Jennifer, I really had fun on this interview. Thank you so much for coming on here and just sharing your testimony about how you've overcome anxiety, how you've overcome, um, you know, that, uh, that challenge with self-care and boundary setting. And, and really we didn't do it any justice. We could talk for hours about this, but Jennifer yeah. had to overcome a lot of things mindset wise. It didn't happen overnight. No. But what, but what, what I want to challenge everybody that's listening is, is that really set aside the time to work on overcoming. Yes. 
And so, you know, if Jennifer and I hadn't had these weekly meetings, it might have just passed her by. You know, yeah. but you were wise. You chose, you said, you know what, I need to do something. And instead of, you know, a lot of times we choose to go out for a coffee or whatever, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you chose an investment that gives life. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's probably yeah. just one of the best investments that you could ever make. It really is. I mean, you know, salvation and then working it out in connecting with someone like Anna. Hallelujah. Prefer, yeah, and, and I'm said. glad you said that. Like, it doesn't have to be me. It could even be listening to an Overcoming Daily podcast once a week. It could be sitting down and working on the principles that you might that that you might hear me say, or another someone else that's encouraging you on your overcomer journey. But all of us, even the overcomer coach, has. As a matter of fact, I take time daily to meditate and to reflect on what it is I need to do to overcome whatever I'm going through. So. Uh, we just want to encourage people set apart some time to overcome. Yes. Right. Because yeah. life just, and boy, Jennifer, your life is really, the stream is it's, 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 it's moving smoother now. Right. It really is. It really is. And you've got, is. you've got things living in that stream. There's live things living in that stream. Yes. Hallelujah. It's Hallelujah. night and day. It really is. And I, I will just be forever, forever thankful. Hallelujah. to everything that you've helped us with and contributed. So we Hallelujah. appreciate you. You've been a blessing, Jennifer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's just close out with prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you that every day is an overcomer day. We thank you, Father. I thank you for Jennifer. I thank you that she is humble and kind enough to share her testimony today. Your word says that we overcome by the testimony of our faith and the blood of the lamb, Father. And today we declare and decree that, that we are saved by his blood. You have been faithful and that we are indeed overcomers. In your beloved son's name, we pray. We thank you. We give you the glory. Let it be so according to your will. Hallelujah. Amen. So Father, we just, we thank you. Father, we thank you. And listen, listeners, we just pray that you too will work out your salvation. Part of working out your salvation is overcoming daily. All right. Till next time, guys, have an overcomer day. Shalom. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Overcoming Daily with Anna Johnson. Anna Johnson.